Sony gave me a unique opportunity. Essentially, they said, yo, if you could pick six lenses that you can keep into your bag, which six lenses would they be? Which six Pokemon would you take to the World Coronation Tournament and come out a champion? So in today's video, we're gonna be talking about my top six lenses for filmmaking. These are gonna be lenses that I would keep in my bag and I probably wouldn't pick anything else if I was to pick lenses with autofocus, great features, and an amazing image. Now, that being said, Sony did not sponsor this video. However, there is one sponsor and it's Motion VFX. A lot of you guys wanted to know the tools I use to edit these videos and today we're actually gonna talk about them, finally. We've never actually mentioned them. Okay, let's start the video. Okay, so the first lens we're gonna talk about is going to be the 14 millimeter G Master lens for your full frame camera. And at 14 millimeters, it's actually incredibly wide or super wide is what the actual name is called. Now you can use a 14 millimeter lens in a couple of different ways. A lot of people that like doing things like real estate end up using this to make their small rooms look a lot bigger. However, for me, because I don't use real estate, I use it to get really close to stuff and get it interesting in a new perspective or just to bother people while they're eating. Now with wider lenses, every single millimeter is going to count. Like right now I'm shooting on a 20 millimeter G lens and I'm just gonna put this on so you can see how much the image actually changes. And just like that, going from 20 millimeters to 14, you get a lot more of me than you bargained for. Now with this lens, you're gonna have one caveat that actually makes it really good for the FX6, but also a little bit annoying if you don't have a camera with built-in NDs. Now, the 14 millimeter lens is incredibly wide and to get that wild field of view, you're gonna have a little bit of curvature in the front element of the lens. Now with that curvature at the front of the lens, it makes it really hard to put ND filters or any kind of filter on the front of this thing. But Sony actually made something a little bit interesting. You could actually put a set of filters on the back of the lens. So on the rear of the 14 millimeter G Master lens, you have the opportunity to actually get a set of filters and use those on the back. Now, the annoying part about that is that you're going to have different filters for different things and you're gonna have to carry another thing on you. But if you're using a camera like the Sony FX6 or anything with a built-in ND filter, you don't have to worry about that at least when you wanna control your exposure. Okay, so the thing I was gonna talk about was something called distortion. Every wide angle lens is gonna have them and some of them do better than others. Now, there's a type of distortion called barrel distortion where you're gonna notice that any lines in the corner of the frame are going to be a little bit bowed in and it looks a little bit off-putting and that's actually fairly controlled on the 14 millimeter lens now if you do notice you're still going to get a little bit of different perspective if i move my face really close to the camera and that's called perspective distortion now when using wide angle lens you're still going to get a wide angle perspective distorting is something that you can control for but the perspective of a wide angle lens when you're close to an object especially with a small minimum focusing distance you're still going to get that so just be ready for the fact that you're not going to get something that's going to have absolutely no distortion and wide angle. However, the corners of this image actually look really great. Now, it's time to move to the second lens, which is this guy. And that's a 20 millimeter G lens, the F1.8. And this is actually one of the first lenses that I got for my Sony system. All right, so we are at the studio because I like practicing cinematography as much as I can. However, we are gonna talk about our second lens, which is going to be the 20 millimeter G lens by Sony. And for what it's worth, I think this 20 millimeter lens should get that G Master distinction, although it's not the most important thing in the world. Not only is this going to be incredibly sharp and have great color like the other G Masters do, you also get the custom buttons and the manual aperture as well. So it actually keeps the same form and structure as the other more expensive lenses. Now, people can go with a 24 millimeter and that's perfectly fine, but you actually save a little bit of money. And personally for me, I actually like the 20 millimeter a little bit better. Now, I could put a cinematic sequence to go with what you can get from this lens. However, you've seen this lens probably the most on this channel. I've actually used this lens for every single video on my YouTube channel for the past year. And uh, yeah, if you're looking for something that's great for talking head videos, that's amazingly sharp and has really good color, the 20 millimeter is the one to go to. On top of that, even though it's a wide lens, it doesn't have that curvature in the L like the 14 millimeter does so you can still use a 67 millimeter filter thread in order to get filters on and to create unique looks. 
Now our two prime lenses down, we should probably talk about zoom. So the next one is going to be the zoom lens that pretty much everyone's gonna get at some point of their life. Oh, at least the focal length. <laughs> Now lens number three is going to be the 24 to 70 G Master lens by Sony. Now this is going to be a couple of different things and cheap is not one of them. This actually might be the most expensive 24 to 70 you can get for your Sony system. However, it has a bunch of different features that are incredibly useful. Now one thing you're going to notice that it's also going to have that sharpness, that color contrast and that punch that you're going to see out of the Sony G Master lenses. And it's also going to be great for photography as well. However, this is more about video than it is about taking stills. Now just as a general concept, 24 to 70 is actually a really responsible decision in terms of building out your lens kit now at 24 millimeters you're gonna get a pretty standard wide focal length and at 70 millimeters you're dabbling into that telephoto focal length and zooming in between the two makes the lens incredibly versatile and useful now of course this guy's gonna have an amazing image it's gonna have great quality and at 2.8 it's gonna be pretty decent in low light it does come with a pretty hefty price tag now if you're somebody that wants to pick up something else it's a little bit cheaper and you don't care about all the custom features in this lens you can always pick something like the 24 to 70 Sigma art lens which is still gonna give you the 24 to 70 at f 2.8 and you're actually gonna get some pretty decent image quality in fact I'm just gonna put some side by side between these two lenses and you can decide for yourself if it's something that's worth paying a lot more for Now today's sponsor is going to be Motion VFX. So a lot of you guys have asked me how I've actually been able to edit a whole bunch of videos that have been on this channel. Now Motion VFX is a one-stop shop for a lot of people to get their plugins or title packs and different effects for DaVinci Resolve, Final Cut Pro, and Adobe Premiere. If you need hype title packs, you can actually go to the title pack named, well, Hype Title Packs. If you wanna find the end screens for your videos to direct your viewers into the next video, there's actually MTuber packs that you can use for different assets for people specifically with YouTube channels. And if you guys are enjoying the premium A1 quality comedy that comes out of this channel with a quick zoom in every time I make a punchline, that's actually from the MKBHD plugin pack that you can get for DaVinci Resolve, Final Cut, or Adobe Premiere. And if you guys are interested in taking a look at what Motion VFX has to offer to actually make your workflow a heck of a lot faster, you can actually check the link down in the description down below, use the code that I'm going to leave on the screen, save yourself a little bit of money, and you can actually make your editing that much easier. Motion VFX is the real deal, more so than this microphone, because it's actually not even on. So special shout out to Motion VFX for sponsoring this video. However, we still have three more lenses that we gotta talk about. Okay, so I guess we're on lens number four, but I'm actually gonna talk about the 35 millimeter G Master lens by Sony. Now I may as well call this Frank's Red Hot Sauce because I put that shit on everything. Now I did pick up this lens about two years ago and I've been using it almost every single shoot since. I was gonna make a cinematic sequence to follow the trend of the different lenses in this video, but honestly I've used this so many times that it's hard to pick just one sequence. I've been using this for things like commercial stuff, ads for my clients, things on this YouTube channel, photography. I've been using this 35 millimeter lens for the last 24 months and I have no intention of selling it anytime soon. Now speaking of lenses that we aren't gonna sell anytime soon but are also really useful is actually going to be the 50 millimeter G Master lens. This is the 1.2 version and I know there's a 1.4 and this is also really expensive, but I really like the look of it. Now, most people in filmmaking and cinematography at one point or another consider getting a 50 millimeter lens in some aspect. And for me personally, I was gonna commit to this focal length as something that's gonna be a staple. So I figured I may as well buy a lens that's gonna be the best out there so I don't have to buy another one anytime soon. A lot of things I'm going to say about the 50mm are going to be the same as the 35 where it's still going to have a punchy color, great autofocus, it's super sharp, and some of the native features that you're going to find out of the Sony G Master line. 
Now, that is to say, you don't have to buy the F1.2 version. I just decided that I was gonna get the one that was at the top of the list. Now, some of the use cases I like about this is general cinematography in general, getting B-roll shots, because it has that compression at 50 millimeters, and it's also not too tight, so you can get some wide and medium shots as well. This also works as a fantastic portrait lens, especially when you're doing things like interview footage or documentary interviews. So if you need something where you're gonna do some talking head stuff, especially with clients and different subjects, this is the one you might wanna go for. However, it does cost a lot of money. Now, telephoto lenses, I only recently started to like these a little bit more. Generally speaking, I never really kept telephoto lenses or anything longer than 70 millimeters in my bag, but using this and a couple of other telephoto lenses, if I'm gonna round out a kit that's gonna be able to get my coverage, a 7200 telephoto lens is a must have. Now, again, this is something that's a little bit more on the expensive side. You can get cheaper telephoto lenses. However, if I'm gonna pick the best 7200 I could find for the Sony system, this is gonna be the one that I pick. Now, the 7200 could be used for a variety of different reasons. As somebody that shoots a lot of sports and fitness, this is a lens by way I could get a lot more B-roll shots, longer focal lengths, and overall to create more compression in the look. Generally speaking, the more telephoto you go, the more punched out the background's gonna look, even if you're using a higher f-stop than a f1.8, 1.4, or 1.2. At f2.8 at 70 millimeters or even down to 200, that background is going to be pretty out of focus and you're going to get a more isolated look and get a lot of bokeh in the background. I've worked on a couple of projects where I actually had to be a little bit farther away in terms of my distance from my subject and I just couldn't get the job done on a 50 millimeter lens or a 24 to 70 or something like that. And that's where something like a 70 to 200 actually comes in handy. Now, after all the fun and excitement from choosing my top six lenses that would stay in my bag indefinitely, there are some things you might have questions about. One is the obvious all these lenses are really expensive. Now, in the context of this video, I did say the best lenses for the Sony system, and oftentimes best and cheap usually aren't in the same sentence. So if I had a limited budget, these are the six lenses that I would pick, in my opinion, that would be the best for that system. The reason being is because all of these lenses do have autofocus. So if you're someone who's a solo operator, a solo videographer, autofocus comes in handy as opposed to using some cinema glass that are manual because you might have to pull focus yourself or you're going to need a focus puller. Another thing is because a lot of these lenses are G and G Master lenses, they're all going to match up from a color, sharpness, and a quality perspective as well. So I don't have to worry about doing a lot of grading to get the look to look the same between all the lenses, and it makes my life a heck of a lot easier. Another thing is that you also do have manual apertures on all six of these lenses. Now, manual aperture, if you're someone like a photographer, might not be the most important thing to you. But if you're shooting video, being able to change your exposure on the fly actually might help you out quite a bit. And lastly, all of these lenses are supported with some of the native features that are on the Sony camera itself. Each one of these lenses has at least one custom button that you could program to different features, and you could use things like focus breathing compensation, which only works on a selective array of lenses. All of the lenses in this list is going to work with the Sony system natively, it's going to give you the best features that you possibly can on the camera system, and that's why I picked all six of these lenses. That being said, I hope you guys learned something, or at the very least, you're entertained by this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.